Now that you've got your robot built, or as you're still working on finishing up your building, I'd like to get your initial thoughts about programming. Um, another way to think about this is, what do you know about translating languages, or what do you know about other languages, or what do you know about converting something, like maybe converting inches to centimeters or something like that. So go ahead and take about five minutes to write down your initial thoughts when you hear the word programming. Go ahead and pause the video and then restart it when you're ready to go. All right, welcome back. Let's jump into programming. All right. So I'm going to start off by showing you how to name your bot. Uh, this is something that we talked about in the last video and I told you I'd show it to you. Um, you're going to get your USB cord. So you're going to start by making sure you have that in your kit and plug that into your computer as we talked about in class. You're going to go ahead and open the LEGO Mindstorms compiler. We'll talk about what a compiler is later. Um, but it looks like this symbol right here. Whoa, I don't know what happened there, but let's move back here. All right, so we have this right here. Sorry about that. Um, you're going to then go to File. I'll demonstrate this for you in a second. New Project, Program, Open. You're going to connect the bot. Notice you haven't done any of that until now. Um, you're going to go down to this screen right here. It's called the Brick Information Screen. And then you're going to check, the, click in the name area, which is going to be right up here. And you're going to write in your robot name. So give me a second here to swap over. Down some of the programs here and let's rename this. So you'll see that I have this open. I don't have a brick connected, um, but again, it would be right about here that you should be able to open up that and type in the name and then press enter and you should have your bot named. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and exit out of that here. So now I'm going to switch back to my presentation. Here we go. And let's move on here. All right. So terminology or vocabulary you're going to hear me refer to. Um, a compiler. It's basically just a, a program or an app that uh, used to write code, um, translate what you want into a robot language. You'll hear other types of compilers like a C++ pro compiler. Um, we use one called EV3. You're going to hear me use the term complex action. Uh, this is just something that you want your robot to do like move 20 centimeters, turn around, and come back. That's a complex action. Or you want your robot to go forward until it senses a wall and then turn around and come back to you and stop. Um, we have what's called the pre-write or step-by-step. You can hear me use step-by-step -step quite often. This is where you take and break something down into instructions or individual steps. I'm going to practice this. This is a good way to do a pre-write for a robotics program it helps um, you kind of see when you start writing your code code is broken down into individual steps so we start off by just simple English um, writing step by step then we have something called pseudocode which is where you mix step by step you mix what you under how you understand the program to work or what you want your robot to do simple plain English into code you mix it with some code things and this is your rough draft where you're actually starting to say what you're going to use how you're going to write your code okay. And again, that's pseudocode. The P is silent. Okay. Um, when you're programming, it's similar to translating into another language. Um, there's going to be a lot of trial and error. Uh, you're going to have to use some documentation and kind of keep track of what worked and what didn't work. This is where that patience comes into play. Things don't always work the first time, or something may work the first time, and then it doesn't work the second time. Um, so it's going to be up to you to kind of figure out um, how do you get that consistency or what's causing the problems? Um, you start in this three-step process by breaking down the complex action into a step-by-step. -step. What are the individual steps to complete that task? Then you move into translating step-by-step -step into pseudocode. What blocks, what code are you going to use? And then you write your code. A very simple um, process, but can be nerve-wracking at times. Okay. Um, start step by step a little bit more in depth here is you start by taking that complex action and breaking it down into individual steps think about when you walk into class how many steps you're walking into class and starting the opening routine that I have for you is is quite complex um, you start by walking in the door maybe you had to open the door and you had to find your seat um, you needed to sit down 
you know, those kind of things. When you're writing step by step, only one action or a decision per line. You can't do sit down and start writing in your um, in your agenda. It would be sit down, then the next step would be writing in your agenda. Um, and it's usually written in a numbered list, or such as the example here, decision one, action one, action two, action three, action four, so on and so forth. So um, in class you're going to be doing a little task here. And in your notes I'd like you to write the steps needed for logging into your computer. This would be so you can start by start from the point where you've gotten to your computer, you sat down, and you're either your computer screen is on, you're at the login screen, I want to know what steps it take you take to get into the computer. How do you log on? Okay, I'll go ahead and pause the video and then restart it when you're ready to go. Alright, welcome back. We'll be discussing this in class. Um, there may be some questions associated with this, but kind of curious as to how many steps you got. You know, I got the following steps. I know I told you to skip this part here, um, but for my purposes, I wanted to kind of get it in there. So here you can see how many steps there are, up to seven steps. You have some decisions in here, and you have some actions. Okay, a decision. Decide if monitor's on or off. This is where you're having to make based on some input. Do you see the monitor? If it's off, this is what you need to do. If it's on, you can move on. These are actions. Okay, these are something that you're doing. Now look here, it says look for a desktop. This is going to be a decision. So you have to decide, you're looking for the desktop. Do you see the desktop or is it not on there? Um, or when you see the desktop, do you see username and password fields? When you type those in, are they correct or not? Okay, so moving on here. Um, what I'd like you to do is take out a sheet of notebook paper, put a heading on it, and write the directions for the action below. That'll pop up here in a minute. Um, we're going to be using this as a little in-class activity. Um, if you're doing this outside of class, that's okay. Um, you'll be comparing this with your partner. If you're doing it in class, you can compare it with your partner as well. Once you and your partner have completed just writing down the steps for the action that I show you, then bring them up. Um, when you compare them, you don't need to edit them or anything like that. I just want you to write down what the, you think the steps are. And those steps are going to be for chewing gum. So write down all the steps you need for chewing gum, switch with your partner, and then bring it up to me for the next part of the task. Okay. All right, your homework. Hopefully you enjoyed or will enjoy that um, activity that we did. And if you have any questions, be sure to let me know. But for your homework, I want you to write down the step-by-step -step for the following complex action. So the complex action is below, right here. This is your complex action. Okay. Your robot shows closed eyes. So this is what your robot is going to have to do. It shows that it has eyes that are closed, and it looks like or sounds like it's snoring. Okay. Then after two seconds, it opens its eyes and says hi, then laughs when you press the center button. Okay. So. Um, this is your action that you need to write the steps on, and you'll do these in your notes. Um, you can um, also submit this in Google Classroom. I'll go ahead and pause. All right, sorry about that. I had to go answer the door. All right, so again, you use your notes to help 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 you on that, and you know, this will be due at the beginning of class tomorrow. I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here and call that. Uh, good, and then we'll move on with the next one here in a second.